Hello, this is Andrew, and this should be a set of DT Swiss ER1400 spline disc wheels. Um, I originally bought these to be the dedicated gravel wheels for the giant project bike, um, but I had, when, when I bought them on December 29th, today is February 11th, um, that, that was the plan. But in the month and a half or so, not quite a month and a half, that it took for them to get here from an overseas retailer who shall go unnamed. Um, they were, they told me they were lost in the mail, so uh, I went ahead and bought a different set of wheels. So I'm not actually sure what I'm going to use these for, um, but they're here, so we might as well review them, right? Um, before I open the box, these are the spline version. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that. There's also a die cut version of the ER1400. There are differences between die cut and spline. Um, not very many of them make a difference, so if you're really curious, go look it up. Um, but the splines are lighter, or they should be anyway. Uh, I think 1470 is the quoted weight for them, or right thereabouts, um, but we'll get them open on the scale to find out what they really weigh. Um, the main reason why I got them, and I think they're about the same price, is that spline uses normal spokes whereas the die cut uses a special spoke, which um, is harder to maintain or, you know, you're hard to find them if one of them breaks. So let's get it open, then we'll get it measured and weighed. Here is the kit that comes with it. You actually get a lot of stuff. You get a tubeless valve, I think. Yeah, tubeless valve, different uh, hubs. These are quick release hubs. This is an X. DR driver looks like some wheel locks or oh, six bolt six bolt to center lock converter Here is the rear wheel and it is center lock This has a DT Swiss 240 S hub so it should be pretty nice. And let's see how loud it is. Oh, that's super, super quiet. Okay, let's see what this says. Read manual first. Okay, we will make sure to do that. One of the interesting things about this wheel is that it's an asymmetric wheel, which means that, and it might be hard to see it, that the wheel the spokes actually attach here on, on the edge here instead of straight down the middle. This is supposed to make for a stronger, stiffer wheel, but I don't know. So, got the scale set up, but before we put the wheels on the scale, let's uh, measure the rims, the rim dimensions. So we have the front wheel here, but it shouldn't matter. Um, it should be 24 external, 20 internal, 21 for the depth. So let's check that. I'm getting 20.8 for depth, 23.3 for the external, and 19.9 for the internal. So those are all pretty close. Um, let's check weight now. This is again the front wheel. So that's 676.2, which uh, by recollection, I think that's more than it ought to be, but I'll throw the numbers up there to, to verify all that stuff. And then the front wheel, or sorry, the back wheel is 813.3, which also I think is more than it ought to be. Um, one thing to keep in mind, these are taped with um, tubeless tape. So it's possible that some of the difference in weight comes from that um, versus the, the claimed weight. And let's get the tubeless valves. Um, before I throw them on the scale, one interesting thing about these tubeless valves, and hopefully that comes through, is that they have, because these are asymmetric wheels, the clamping mechanism 
on the, for the top, the part that goes on the rim, that's asymmetric as well, which might, I don't know how important that is, but that might make it a little bit challenging should you want to replace these with something else. Um, another interesting thing about these is that the valve cover is also a core remover. So you can stick the valve cover around the core and use it to take the core out. So that's pretty neat. Um, let's get these on the scale. They are together 7.1 grams without the valve covers and with the valve covers 8.3. So here we have the rear wheel on the Turing stand and I'm just going to spin it. You can see it's 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 okay. It's decent, but there's a place and you can hear it or you should be able to hear it where it comes into contact right there with this one on this side. So that's not ideal. Let's check the radial now. So here here we have it set up to radially test the true As you can hear, it's not perfect this way either. So here's the front wheel. We're starting in this position because that's how I have it. And it is also not radially true. Not by a ton. But uh, obviously, we shouldn't be hearing that noise here when we don't hear it there. You can see the gap right in here opens quite a bit and then closes. And you can see that there's a decent amount of wobble in the wheel. hear it there. So I ran into an interesting problem with these uh, DT Swiss ER1400 splines and that is that the end cap here is too wide to allow this tool to function properly. You can't put it on far enough to actually put this lock ring in place. And as you can see, I ended up stripping the edges. It's not supposed to look like that. It's supposed to look like, like that. Like, obviously, this is a brand new one that's not stripped. And it took me a little while to figure out why that's happening. And it's because this is too wide. So this end cap here is as you get farther in, it widens. So it's, what, 19.9 millimeters there. And this problem is, is I've only seen it on this end cap, because I have another set of DT Swiss. These are 350s, but obviously I can get the lock ring on here just fine. And this one is just a straight 19. So that works. That does not. I contacted DT Swiss support and the person I corresponded with there was both incredibly responsive and incredibly helpful. Uh, unfortunately, they confirmed both of the things which I had suspected. One, there's no way to mount this on here. They don't support it. And two, this is not suitable either because uh, it's too long. You can see, if you hold up the rings next to each other, you can see that this one, the six bolt one, is quite a bit longer. If I hold them like that, maybe it's a little bit easier to see. It's quite a bit uh, longer. And so it doesn't 
clamp against the rotor with enough force or properly so that this is secured. I'm very pleased with the responsiveness of DT support, but I do think it's kind of it's rubbish that they designed this hub the way that they did. And the problem stems from the axle in here. You can see the shiny bit inside of there. The way that they designed it to support uh, 15 mil through axles, it's too wide for even if you have a 12 mil end cap on here for the tool that you use to tighten this down, the cassette tool. Had I known that before I bought these, I don't think I would have bought them because that's, I, I just don't think it's good uh, practice to support bad engineering and that's bad engineering. There are lots of other, there are lots of wheel sets out there that support both 12 and 15 mil uh, axles, through axle, and they do it in a way that supports this lock ring. This is a road wheel set. This is a road rotor. This is the lock ring that comes with this road rotor. It should support this. This is Shimano standard. Uh, center lock is Shimano standard, and this is the standard, and they don't support it. They did suggest, DT Swiss did su suggest the way that you do that, the way that you um, attach it, is with something that looks like this. Um, the one that they suggested initially, and I'll put an image up there, actually won't work for me across the different bikes that I have, and I know that because I've tried it. It has a lip along the edge here, and there's not enough clearance in on the air road for it to, to not rub a groove into the fork, and that's not ideal. They did, when I mentioned that, there's another version of this that Shimano makes for uh, their turny disc rotors that looks much more like very similar to this, where it's flat, and that should work with this as the, in that case. But here again, this is a place where DT Swiss has, they need to do, they should be doing better. This is a road wheel set. If you get road rotors and they don't work and they don't provide it the, the right thing, even if it doesn't work perfectly for me, if it hits you know 90% of the bikes, out there, uh, they should be providing that because when you buy a road rotor, you get that, and it's not going to work. And then you're in a situation where you just can't ride the wheels. And that that first run experience, that that thing that you can never undo with your customer, that's not awesome for them. Just like it's been not awesome for me. I have to go to the bike shop, have to figure out how to make this work. Uh, fortunately, my trip to the bike shop was fruitful and they suggested using a washer like this. Now they usually use these washers, which are not bike parts, uh, as shims on the other side of the rotor because most, it's, it's very unlikely to find across, uh, if you have a bunch of different wheel sets, that the rotor sits exactly, the, sits in exactly the same place on all of the, the wheels. So you often have to adjust the caliper if you're changing wheel sets. And so they put these on varying widths of these on the other side to control uh, the shim, basically the, the rotor so that their customers can seamlessly flip wheel sets without having to calibrate or change the caliper or uh, placement. And so what they suggested is that you just, I do this. And when I do that, I get a lock ring that is of the same depth, or at least close enough, that when I install this on here, it will be able to apply the, the appropriate level of force to the rotor to make sure that it, it's safe to ride. So hats off to my local bike shop. Uh, kudos to them. Um, they're great. Last night, I mounted these Penracer Gravel King tires on the DT Swiss ER 1400 spline using the stock valve. Um, I don't like the valve covers that come with it, uh, so I'm just using a stock valve cover, or I, one that comes with a normal inner tube. Um, I've come back just to check pressure 24 hours later. I put 50 PSI in the front and 
54 in the back here. So we're just gonna throw this on here and have a look to see what we're, where we're at. And so we have 52, which is really good. So I think it's time to wrap up on these um, DT Swiss ER1400 spline wheels. All in, the uh, general feeling is that I like them a lot, uh, aside from the wonkiness with the um, front center lock. I still don't like that, and it annoys me, but whatever. They, whether you're using them on the road or you're using them out here in the, uh, in the slop, they do really, really well. Um, I think a lot of that comes down to the 240 hub on the wheel set. Um, I really like the 240 hub, except for that center lock thing. The wheels themselves are super stiff, and you definitely feel that stiffness, whether you're on the road or you're out here. And you also feel the weight of the rim when you compare it back to back with a um, similarly weighted carbon rimmed wheel set. I have a similar set of wheels that are slightly lighter, but with 350 hubs. And the rim itself is much lighter than this, but the total wheel set weight is um, not that different. But you feel the weight of these rims. But the, that weight comes across in the stiffness and the durability, I'm sure, in here. Now, I'm not a heavy rider, but um, I would have no trouble recommending these to heavier riders because of the both the stiffness and the durability of the rim. They're just... Uh, they're like tank wheels. They're bulletproof. And they're not a super heavy wheel set either. They're, they're what, just shy of 1,500 grams. So yeah, they're great for that. A little bit more on that center lock thing. Um, I guess the question is, why not run six bolts? And I guess you could run six bolts. Uh, I, tr I put one on and there's a slight weight penalty versus the Altegra disc. And you don't really get anything. And if I was going to if I wanted to run six bolts, I'd probably run, I probably would have bought a six bolt wheel set instead of this where I thought I could just run, you know, road disc rotors, but it is what it is. I've also done, I've done gravel and road on these and the road I used a 28C Continental GP 4000 and they're great on the road. So if you had one wheel set that you needed to use for road and gravel, I'd have no re no trouble recommending this wheel set for that either, as long as you can live with that center lock crazy. So that's all there is, pretty much all there is to it. So I'd say uh, I like them. I probably wouldn't buy them again, but just because of that center lock wonkiness. But I'm glad I have them. Hopefully you found that useful. If you did, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and like the video. If you have any questions or comments or anything I didn't address, just drop them below and I will get to them as soon as I can. Cheers.